The last two years have seen a big change in the way that we conduct business. When we became unable to meet face-to-face -face in the spring of 2020, many clubs turned to online meetings to continue their work. In the many months since, virtual meetings have become a common, if not preferred, way for many committees and boards to meet and work together. As such, they've seen some new, unique challenges arise. In today's session, we'll offer 15 best practices to help your club be at its best when it comes to your virtual committee and board meetings. Let's go. Be prepared. When you agree to serve on a board or committee, you agree to do the work necessary to ensure that your group's work will be successful. This includes doing a little work before the actual work even begins. We already know that we should come to an in-person meeting prepared. This means reviewing the agenda, the minutes that will need to be approved, financial reports, committee summaries, background information, and any other documents that inform you about the meeting ahead. The same is equally true for your virtual meetings. In fact, I'd venture that it may be even more important as it can be easy to become distracted when attending a meeting from the comfort of your home. Log on to your computer knowing what to, is to be discussed and what questions you may have. One last note, if you're the one responsible for putting together meeting materials, remember that it's your job to help others be prepared. Give them plenty of time in advance to review any information necessary for a meeting by sending things out by email at least five days in advance. Next up, add value. What does that mean exactly? It means that you should come into your virtual meeting ready to find new ways you can add value to the meeting. This may mean summarizing key points, offering suggestions, giving programmatic updates, answering questions, and sharing your unique point of view. Whether you're participating from a laptop in your home office or checking in on your smartphone in the living room while your kids play in the background, it's your responsibility to participate and contribute in meaningful ways that will support your club's needs, values, and mission. Our third tip is to use smart agendas. Your meeting to-do list needs to make sense in every way. This means ensuring that the length of the meeting is logical for the number of items on the agenda. For virtual meetings, this may mean putting fewer items on an agenda as the online environment can lend itself to needing more time for clarification, explanation, and repetition. People are also less likely to want to commit to a long time span in front of a screen when they're at home. The Nonprofit Leadership Center recommends allocating 60 to 75 minutes for an online meeting. Time matters. Your meeting has a posted start time. Stick to it. Same goes for the ending time. People like to know that their time will be respected. Have members with a habitual tardiness issue? Don't feel like you must wait for everyone to get started. People often need to learn by example and notably missing the first several minutes of a meeting helps hold them accountable. It also cements your club's expectation for punctuality and respecting each other by being on time. Our fifth best practice is all about finding the right balance between strategic and personal discussion. One of the things we love most about being a Sertoman is the camaraderie and socialization. Admittedly, some of that is lost when we're not able to meet in person. That's why we encourage you to build personal time into your board and committee calls. Take a few minutes to check in with everyone at the beginning of the call or in this session with an optional social time. Just keep in mind that the driving purpose of the meeting should be club business. This is your time to have strategic discussions about the important issues you're facing. If mundane items like approving a small expenditure or finding volunteers can be achieved outside the meeting by email, don't be afraid to do that. Virtual meetings are all about keeping things going and making life easier for everyone. Now, let's talk about what Boardable, a nonprofit board management software provider, calls enhanced governance. They point out that organizations rely on online meetings to make time-sensitive decisions and keep the lines of communication open. Simply put, this tool allows us to do our jobs better during times of challenge as well as in everyday life. Boardable believes that utilizing digital meetings can help organizations, quote, exercise greater control over meetings and maintain focus in the boardroom, directly supporting strong and capable governance. We have already mentioned distraction a few times so far, so let me reiterate this one more time. It's critical to be present. We've all had those volunteers who sit there silently, never contributing, and perhaps even barely listening. 
I won't pretend that this gets any better in a virtual setting either. However, we need to acknowledge that passive participants won't help your club accomplish its goals. You need to hold everyone accountable. They need to understand that it's their responsibility to be engaged, active attendees. One way to put participation on Fun Street is to incorporate video calls into your meetings. Opt for a Zoom call rather than a conference call. You'll be able to see who is paying attention and who's working a crossword puzzle while you meet. In cases where you have a hybrid meeting with in-person and remote members, video can also be a great way to keep everyone part of the conversation. Coming in at number eight, know your bylaws. Do your club governing documents allow you to meet virtually? Sertoma's national organization allows for virtual meetings and in fact, our board regularly meets by Zoom, as do all of our committees. However, as every club has their own set of bylaws and policies, it's worth a second glance to ensure that there aren't any specific meeting regulations in place. If there are, it may be time to make updates to your covering documents. Just remember to file your new version with HQ if you pass any changes. Be accommodating. This one is a callback to earlier when we said that time matters. This is equally true when it comes to setting up the times you'll actually meet. You need to be accommodating of everyone's schedule to the best of your ability. It's not just about when the chair says that the group should meet. It needs to be what works best for the majority of attendees. Otherwise, your attendance will be low, you risk not making quorum, and your work will be all for naught. Free digital scheduling tools like Doodle can make this easy to achieve. You can also take a survey by email to find a permanent day and time you will meet on a continual basis. The more you can plan ahead, the better for everyone. Everybody talks. Make this a personal goal at every single committee or board meeting you hold online. This helps promote collaboration from the jump. It also supports the personal time we talked about earlier, as well as encourages engagement. Some clubs may go the usual route and just do a verbal roll call, but I encourage you to make it a little more interesting. Use an icebreaker to warm everyone up and get them settled in for the meeting. It can be uplifting, like what is something positive that happened this week, or strategic, like what is a goal you have for the club this year? Or just plain fun, like which vegetable is the absolute worst? My personal vote is for green peppers. Whatever approach you choose, it's all about making everyone feel welcome and getting them involved. After many minutes or perhaps even hours of discussion, it can be easy to drift off. Maybe one of your kids has wandered into the room, your spouse has a question, your pet needs to be fed, or there's something interesting outside your door. That's why it's important to check in with your attendees. Periodically make sure that everyone is still on the same page and understanding the conversation. Ask for their feedback and welcome questions. If you see that there is a significant issue with the majority of the participants, take a short break so that everyone can rest their eyes and stretch their legs. Let it flow. It almost sounds meditative, doesn't it? However, we're not talking about tranquil waters here. Instead, we're referring to conversation. There's nothing worse than a long, awkward pause during a Zoom call. It leaves everyone uncomfortable and staring at a screen. It's important to keep the conversation going and to be mindful of lags and stalls. Boardable recommends assigning times to each agenda item to keep things moving. If you find yourself facing one of those elongated moments of silence, it's okay to just move on. You can also have an agenda slideshow to keep things on pace. The 2020 rule is something promoted by the Nonprofit Leadership Center and Nonprofit Learning Labs. This practice encourages you to put 20% fewer items on a virtual meeting agenda, but to allow 20% more time. We all know that online meetings need more time for repetition and clarification, but this doesn't get any less true as we age. This rule gives you an easy way to plan accordingly. Our penultimate rule focuses on setting your ground rules. This can mean different things to different groups. A few to consider include, request that everyone turn on their camera, but mute the sound when not speaking. Let participants know that the chair will recognize them before speaking to prevent people from talking over each other. Set maximum speaking times for topics to maintain balance and efficiency. You'll want to make sure you have a timekeeper for this one. And, Ask everyone to mute their cell phones, televisions, music, etc. to reduce background noise while speaking. We finally reached our last best practice, 
utilize technology. This doesn't just mean the meeting platform itself. PowerPoint is one of the best resources we have for presenting meeting materials so that we can all see things together. Keep slides to just key information and data points. Transition slides can help shift from topic to topic and lets everyone be equally aware of what is being discussed at any given time. However, you don't want to fill your slides with tons of text because it can be too hard to read. Animated transitions, videos, and GIFs should also be avoided as they can interfere with audio and internet speed. And that's it on our virtual meeting best practices. We'd like to remind you that Sertoma offers a free Zoom meeting platform to all of its clubs, complete with closed caption options. You can make your reservations via the form available in the club resources page in the Member Center at sertoma.org. We also provide a place for you to connect with our members and staff through Facebook. Find us in our member corner at the link on the screen.